Uh, sir, can you help me with the thinking of this one lakh crore loan that you set aside for states? Uh, what was the reason or thinking behind it? Did it have anything to do with the fact that the compensation period is ending this year and hence there's some uncertainty on state finances which may be holding them back from spending? Uh, no, not really. You know, that, the two are not connected. They are, they both both are true. It's true that the compensation ends in uh, June and it is true that we have done this, but the two are not connected. The reason for doing this is, as I said, the, the basic assumption, the thrust, the policy in this budget is to revive employment and growth through infrastructure investment. Basically, the thrust is trying to create gainful employment rather than palliative employment or you know um, relief expenditure and to do that we need to have this expenditure being actually spent on the ground and we need it to be widely dispersed geographically and sectorally so the capacity of central ministries and central undertakings to absorb a huge increase in capital expenditure is only to a certain extent secondly Central projects are confined to certain geographical zones. So yes, there are some border roads projects and so on, but they're generally aligned across railway lines, national highways, you know, pipelines, telecom lines, etc. But state capex is very dispersed. It occurs in every district of the country. So both for reasons of quick delivery of the funds into actual shovels on the ground and for geographical dispersal. And also because we had a very positive response to the two smaller allocations that we made in 2021 and 2122 of 10,000 and 15,000 crores for exactly this purpose, we decided that this was the way forward. And uh, by the way, in the first two years, it's received a very good reception from the states. And the state chief ministers and finance ministers in their meeting with the union finance minister about a couple of months ago, had actually said this was one of the things that they found very useful and they would like it to be continued and if possible stepped up. So this is actually done based on a consultation with the states and I think this part of the capital expenditure will actually um, get implemented very quickly because it's it's something they have the capacity to do. The grants to states are down, is that because the revenue deficit grants are down uh, for the year? Overall grants? Revenue deficit grants, according to the Finance Commission's award, go down each year. They, they peak in year one and they decline until year five. Yeah. yeah. Not, uh, we have stuck to exactly the Finance Commission's recommendations. Uh, so a question on uh, sort of, uh, you know, the ability to actually spend uh, beyond the allocation. Uh, you know, we have gone from, say, capex of three or black crore very quickly to six plus. Uh, is there a spending capacity? Five and a half, if you ask me. Five and a half, not six. Five and a, okay, five and a half. Uh, but still, a significant jump, right? I mean, uh, yes. there, there is there is spending capacity. Uh, there is sort of, uh, you know, enough attention being given to process to try and make sure that this money actually gets used effectively. Yes, it's a challenge for them to do it. And process changes have been made. I think um, now one of the things which we did mention in the budget is that procurement rules are being changed. And uh, it's being made easier for certain kinds of decisions to be taken. But overall, it remains uh, something on which the government has to pay a lot of attention. I mean, spending six and a half lakh crores next year by the central government. I think the one lakh will actually go more easily than the six and a half. So the six and a half is a challenge for the uh, and also the nature of the projects that the central government undertakes are such that they typically do involve a lot of environmental clearances they tend to be bigger projects with bigger clearance requirements land acquisition and so they are prone to taking longer than the small capital projects of the states but i think going from five to five and a half this year to six and a half next year is not that big of a stretch. I think that's approximately a 20, I mean, five and a half to six and a half is less than 20%. I, I think that- About 70% till December. That's right. But I think the that is a leap that is uh, possible. Okay. Uh, and states, you're convinced that they'll be able to spend the money because even the state, state spending, and we have data only for the first half of the year here, uh, and there were, you know, of course, issues of uh, COVID restrictions, et cetera, at that time. But they've been pretty slow, the major states on spending on CapEx in the first half. States generally do not prioritize CapEx. In any financial situation, they prioritize welfare schemes, uh, which is why I think that they 
will actually lap this up because they would this is money that they can get only for capital and it doesn't bite into their revenue or welfare schemes in any way and it's not that states don't like to do capital projects it's just that given a, a budget constraint they feel obliged to spend on welfare which is also i mean the political economy dictates that they pay attention more to the first than to the latter but this is exclusively tied to capital expenditure and they do have that absorptive capacity particularly because they've not been spending much on capital expenditure from their own resources uh, sir, I saw your comments sir, to Informist Media where you were sort of explaining the uh, shift between revenue spending and capital spending. Uh, you know, uh, and Manrega is a long-standing debate, but even on subsidies, uh, food, fertilizer, you may need to allocate more during the year. Are you banking on the fact that you know you may get more revenues that you budgeted for? So if you need to allocate more to some of these heads, you will have space. Both of them are, so in the case of fertilizer, I am hoping that international commodity prices on the inputs to fertilizer will not be as astronomically high in the coming financial year as they have been this year. Typically, there is some mean reversion in these prices. They've been at astronomical levels throughout the current financial year. So it is, I think, a reasonable bet that they will correct somewhat next year. Now, it may be that I'm wrong and it may be that they will continue to go up, but I'm also hopeful that the Fed, uh, the Federal Reserve taper will have some effect on asset prices, including commodity prices. So in that sense, I think 105 that we've provided for fertilizer is a decent midpoint estimate. Uh, if it's exceeded, yes, we will have to find the resources. Uh, in the case of food, the, the estimate is actually pretty precise, assuming that the Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana does not continue. Yeah. Now, if those contingencies happen, yes, we will have to look for, uh, we'll have to scrounge and uh, find money for that. So there, and there, so there could there could have been some argument to say that okay, we will uh, we are planning to extend those food transfers, but maybe because the announcement hasn't yet been made, you can't budget for it. No, I'm not even sure the announcement will be made. So how do I budget for? This? Because there is some level of uh, you know uh, after putting it in the budget. It, it, it's I, we don't do budgets that way. Government budgets is not something where you can predict policy. We follow the policy, we don't predict it.